So far in our rapture study, we've shown that the rapture is biblically sound. The fight is over when will it occur. But the word itself is just the Latin word that Jerome used when translating the Greek New Testament. That's it. It's just become more synonymous with the Left Behind series than anything else. Part 2, we clearly saw that Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 was speaking about the same event as he was in 1 Thessalonians 4. They perfectly parallel each other. The Lord appears with a trumpet. The dead are resurrected. Living believers are raptured slash physically changed. And death is destroyed. Part 3 somewhat detoured to discuss how the New Testament describes tribulation and the Great Tribulation periods. They serve as the underpinnings to discussing timing views. The views themselves are basically six in nature. On the chart, they would fall into these places. The next step in our journey is to keep asking the question if Paul discusses any of these components anywhere else in his letters. Because I think it is fair to ask or to expect that if the rapture, where Christ gathers and changes living believers' bodies into immortal bodies, that we should find that type of language in one or more of his other 11 epistles. It's these types of questions that everyone in every camp needs to be asking themselves when determining what view is correct. Then, if the answer is yes, to then ask the follow-up question, does Paul's wording definitively point to one particular timing view? Or, at least, does it start to lean itself into one camp versus another? As noted before, when living believers are raptured, is that Christ will transform their bodies from mortal to immortal ones. Looking for that type of Pauline language should be relatively easy. The change of still the alive believers, mortal bodies into immortal ones, will be a one-time event. You can't biblically argue that this event will repeatedly occur, which should make you already realize that one of the views just doesn't work. Which one? I'll tell you which one by the end of the video. So, does Paul discuss this bodily transformation in any other of his letters? The answer is yes. Just as Paul did in 1 Corinthians 15's section on our future glorious body, specifically verse 49 that says, And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we, the living, shall also bear the image of the heavenly. To be painfully thorough, is that it's obvious that verse 49 and 53 parallel each other. So, again, the Pauline language that we're looking for is living believers' bodies getting changed into heavenly ones. So, where is another place that Paul uses the same type of language? And that is in his letter to the Philippians. Chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. For our conversation, our citizenship, is in heaven, from where we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile, lowly body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. I'm sure it's very straightforward to you that this context and language is speaking about the rapture event. First, it's quite clearly paralleling 1 Corinthians 15's section. Living believers in their mortal bodies get changed and issued new, glorious, immortal ones, just like Jesus' resurrected eternal body. Paul's word choice is different between the two letters, but still the conveyance and the end result are the same. Alasso is best translated as the word 
change when you look at those other usages in the New Testament. For metaskamatizo, it's only found elsewhere in Paul's letters to the Corinthians with 2 Corinthians 11.14 being typically well known as it says Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. Coupling that word with sumorphos is that the Philippians would easily know that Paul literally means we're getting new physical eternal bodies just like Jesus resurrected one. Romans 8.29 is the only other use in the New Testament with Paul saying that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus. So, the physical body change language between 1 Corinthians 15 and Philippians 3 perfectly lines up with each other. Which leads us to the second reason why Philippians 3 20, 21 is speaking about the rapture event is that 320 speaks about living believers looking for the Lord's descent from heaven. This is speaking of the same coming of the Lord event because at the end of verse 21, it says how Jesus will subdue all things unto himself. That should sound familiar because it's the same language he used in 1 Corinthians 15. Both occurrences, Paul is using Psalm 8, 6. And from the surrounding verses in 1 Corinthians 15, it describes the Lord's coming at the eschatos with death being destroyed, which then shows that Philippians 3.20 is in line with 1 Thessalonians 4.17's rapture. This is the same exegetical approach from our prior video that demonstrated the clear alignment between 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15 with living believers in a twinkling of an eye being raptured to the clouds to meet Jesus on his descent from heaven and be changed into their eternal heavenly bodies. So, Paul is quite clearly talking about the same event in Philippians 3 as he was in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. Arguing otherwise forces you to argue that Paul was teaching that there will be multiple times when living believers will see Jesus descend and have their bodies transformed into eternal bodies while meeting him. I'm sorry, that dog just simply doesn't hunt. And as such, is that the combined descriptions of just these three passages does in fact eliminate one of the views from the chart. And that is the full preterist position. Why, you say? Because, let me ask a different question. Jesus' resurrection, physical or spiritual? Physical. That's right. So, therefore, our heavenly body, that is to be just like Jesus, will be physical. <laughs> Another question. Did the believers who might have fled to the mountains prior to 70 AD's destruction of Jerusalem get new, eternal, physical bodies? No. And since the rapture does involve the physical transformation of believers' bodies into eternal, heavenly ones, just like Jesus, is, is it possible for the rapture event to then have taken place in 70 AD. Come on, you could say it's okay, they know. Actually, no. No. Thank you. No more questions. Reminder hit the subscribe button below, turn on the notification bell, hit the like button, and leave a comment. And don't forget to visit us at justscripture.org. But in the meantime, stay salty.
Come on. You know the answer. No.